How's it going, Everett? Okay, so for your Everett locals, I want to introduce you to uh, our fan base. They're called Funko Fanatics. So can the Funko Fanatics give Everett a welcome? I think we have people here from literally Saudi Arabia, Brazil, Europe, all have come here just to uh, welcome us in, in our, uh, our new flagship store. So our fans are why we do this. They're the greatest fans in the world. And I think we had close to 750 people that came from all over the world just to be this event. So uh, fellow fanatics, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Hi guys, welcome to Toy Chat. This is Max. Adam. And Say. And we, this past weekend, went to the grand opening of the Funko headquarters in Everett, Washington. Uh, you fanatics out there may already know about it, you may have heard about it. Funko is the enormous toy company that produces super popular lines of toys like pop vinyl figures, rock candy, Dorbs, mystery minis, all kinds of stuff. Um, we have reviewed a couple Funko toys on our channel. I'll link some of those in the description if you want to check them out. So the grand opening of the headquarters was like this big deal thing. It was an event we were all going to go to um, naturally because they were exclusives. <laughs> um, so we drove to Washington and made like a big road trip out of it. Um, and in this video, we're going to share with you guys a little bit of our experience, plus some vlog footage, and of course, a haul of all the goodies, the exclusives that we got. Uh, Funko HQ has always been in Washington, but they have opened up a Funko shop there. So the first floor of their uh, building is now um, it's a huge store that you can purchase stuff on. Um, the big draw for Funko is they have a lot of exclusives that you can only get during certain events, Comic Con, or um, or like different events that they do. I guess they do like their own little like um, con conventions, like this uh, once every two years, um, so like Funko Fun Days or something. It's kind of like Eighteen Twenty Three. Um, tickets also in like thirty seconds. Yeah, so there's a lot of scoops and that's uh, part of the reason a lot of people go to um, these events and um, they, the exclusive sales were really, really like inflated prices afterwards. So Flippers and scalpers are extremely attracted to these collectibles. Yeah, so understandably, you know, like this event, which is their, you know, flagship store at their location, it's a big deal for a lot of people and there were several exclusives and we're, we're expecting a big, huge turnout too, so. Yes. So basically we'll start off by saying, you know, we prepared for attending by checking out the website, the official blog post about the event, the procedures, and it said very clearly on multiple posts on their website and blog, it said, we can quote it verbatim. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not plan on camping out. You will not be permitted to camp out overnight or line up before 6 a.m., the day of the event. So when we read this, you know, we I remember we were like praising them for it. We were like, we're, so oh. we're like, oh, thank God, you know, this will be so much like less of a pain than like other huge popular events like this. And also the other thing that we appreciate that they we're doing was they're handing out tickets in advance. So it's yeah. not like you have to line up all day and then just Wait all to day. get in, yeah. So, yeah, you have to stand in a line all day to physically get in the store. You stand in a line once to get a ticket, and then you're assigned a time frame, and then you mm -hmm. come back during that time frame. And so, the, in theory, it was sounding wonderful. Yeah, yes. and they give you a full hour in the shop yeah. too. So basically, you're in a group set by an hour, and then you're in that store for an hour. And you can shop all you want. You take pictures. You can do all this, all the fun stuff they have laid out within that hour. Yes. So it was great, it was like no rush, you don't have to be concerned that you know, you're in the sun all day or um, uh, you don't have enough time to shop. Yeah. So yeah, I remember we were talking about it, we were like commending them for doing this, like, oh, it's such a good idea, like more places should do this. It still is a good idea. It is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. But. Basically, so we stayed with a friend of ours in Portland, Oregon, which is so a little ways about, yeah, from us, Everett. Like yeah. ten and a half hours to get to his place in Portland, 
and then um, another like four hours to get so we, we woke from up Portland. early of the day of the launch the the opening. so before well, we woke up the night before we started seeing posts on instagram that a line had already formed yeah, so the event was Saturday, so on Friday when we were traveling and we, we made it to Oregon at the point, and I was like, we're having brunch, and like, we just checked on Instagram, like, oh hey, this is uh, the line that's already been created. So people are already starting lining up at like 2, 2.30 p.m. Friday for an event on Saturday, which you're not supposed to line up until 6 a.m. Saturday. So good, like, 14 hours in advance. So our hope, our assumption was like, oh, they'll eventually be dispersed because it says so clearly on the website, do not camp out. Like you will not be permitted to line up before 6 a.m. So we're, so the, the first, I remember when it was first brought up, you know, we were all kind of like, oh, that's weird, but whatever about it. So yeah, later in the evening, we saw that the line was still there and still growing. And I don't remember if it was the night before or the following morning that we saw that like, like, the line had been formalized, like ropes were laid out, dividers. Well, the thing is, yeah, just right before bed, like, um, like the line has been updated to the point where Funko themselves had roped off the street for these campers. And they were giving them water. They were giving, supposedly giving them water and yeah. gifts, like layout giveaways, that kind of thing. They gave them exclusive little trophies for being in line. Good job for being the hardcore fans who knew to break the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like 9 p.m. and like there was over 200 people already lined up. Yes, so basically, you know, next day rolls around. We made a point to, at this point, get there well before 6 a.m. So we arrive in Everett around like 3 something a.m., yeah, which again is two and a half, over two and a half hours before the website said they would permit people to start lining up. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds and hundreds of people we already there. Being like the six or seven hundred yeah, people. Yeah, we were behind. not even, we were not even within the first 500 people. And we'll get into that, why that was an issue later. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so we get in this line and um, yeah, and it was official. That was the official line. They they did not abide by the rules they laid out at all. They all ha they had all of one staff member uh, had, directing. Like, yeah, they, <laughs> they had, had a couple security people, but they yeah. weren't very like. Um, they didn't really. I mean, honestly, they didn't really seem like they, they were. were they, there's a variety of issues with this. You know, I mean, obviously, it was really upsetting to us that Funko didn't abide by the, the rules that they laid out because I mean, obviously, we because we're us, like, you know, we made a point to like scope out online and the hashtag and everything beforehand. Like the people who didn't, and there were some people who traveled a lot further than we did. Like there were people who traveled from- Didn't you say from like out of the country? There were people from out of the country, yes. Who couldn't make it? I don't know, possibly, probably. I, I know people were in it who came or came to the line who, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there were- There was the was, Utah people, right? Yeah, there were these people, there were these people who I saw posted on the Facebook and they had a much better attitude than I, we would have had about it. They were like, oh yeah, you know, we came here from Utah, you know, and we weren't able to get in, but it was still fun. I was like, oh. <laughs> my comment would have been so different if that was my experience. It, it ended up happening. That was the line. They did nothing. Nothing was said to address the fact that like they didn't abide by the rules. The rules changed or whatever. Um, they never released an official statement. They never, they, it was completely swept under the rug. Um, and I mean, granted, by the time the shop opened, it, I already knew. It's like, it, it would be bad PR at that point for the grand opening for them to admit, like, we made a huge mistake, like, sorry about it, like, blah, blah, at that point they had to just... Did you understand the scope of this mistake? If you had not arrived before 6 a.m., so if you were one of the people, if, if you one of the people actually read their instructions and, and followed, up, it. followed it, and you arrive at 6 a.m., you did not get a ticket. Yeah. I think the cutoff was like 5. Yeah. People who arrived at 5.30 got in the last batch of we, people. Yeah, we arrived, like I said, at 3 something a.m. We were the third to last group to get into the store for the day. Our tickets were for 5 p.m. So mm -hmm. you can imagine them not letting a good chunk of people yeah. in. And there were some people who brought their kids and who, who said like, you know, like, this was like the one thing my daughter wanted to do, you know, this summer. And like, I saw comments on the social media and needless to say, the social media lit up 
with complaints, like especially after the 6 a.m. marker and you know, when the line came and went and there were a ton of people who were in that line who could not even get in that day. And I mean, frankly, if you didn't get in on the first day, God, I feel like the people who went the second day, they might not have gotten any exclusives at all. They were probably yeah, well, They were like, well, we're still gonna be open tomorrow. <laughs> and you guys, we're gonna have a lot of fun things tomorrow too. It's like, well, yeah. but we travel from out of state and we don't yeah. have the time. It did not fit yeah. our itinerary to just come back. Yeah, it was an awful experience for people who maybe not be like super, like, you know, social media savvy and then notice that people are camping out and they arrive later. Or they have kids who, you know, why would you drag your kid at like midnight the night before and camp out for this event, you know? I wish Funko, it was ironic too because like they, it was, they made it like a, a full event. Like there were, um, there were other vendors and artists and like food trucks and stuff like that throughout the day. And that was, I guess, what the people who couldn't get inside did. But it was, it's like, they need to stop, like, for one, like, this pretense that, like, this would, would have been a children's event. And, and I want, I wish at some point Funko would at least acknowledge the fact or try to combat the fact that they're catering so much to flippers and scalpers. Okay. Like, I wish, it's just, it's just, it's a bad, problematic culture for a company like to be engaging in and by the way like i have something to say to the people because i noticed on the social media too like there were a lot of trolls and people who were of course which we verified we verified this for one of them was like a confirmed like flipper scalper because he was like advertising stuff he was reselling on his page like there were a ton of people who were saying like well like that's your problem like you should have anticipated this and rules change and did you really think this wasn't going to be a crazy popular event and i mean there's nothing they can do anyway like you know it is true i will say there's power in numbers it's like it's like cops trying to break up like when pokemon go is at its peak popularity like uh, there's only so much they can do like i get that but Funko had, to put this in perspective, they had the Everett police force, like, staffed at this event. They had their own security. They could have easily, and at the very least, they could have not, like, provided these people freaking like, water and line dividers and, and the, gifts and, like... The gifts, like, boggled me. Like, really? Shouldn't you have saved that for the people who couldn't make it? Like, I don't know. A compensation of some kind. And the thing is, too, it really feels like, yeah, the complaints for this, they're totally just, they're sweeping under the rug because one friend of ours issued a formal complaint. Like, he submitted, like, an email to customer service and all that. And he got a response, and the response read, like, you know, we asked people to do that, but, you know, ultimately we can't control what people do, but, you know, we're open Monday through Friday. <laughs> It's like, I came here for the opening <laughs> of your headquarters. Yeah. <laughs> enough of the complaints, but I mean, yeah. oh, ultimately, it enough? <laughs> it's I not mean, nearly enough. <laughs> like, so we come back, our assigned time was 5 p.m. One thing that was cool, they gave people golden tickets, which we'll show you guys close up, but yeah, they were super pretty and cute, and they let you keep it. Um, and it, it, you had your assigned time, and so ours was 5 p.m. <laughs> that was what showing up at 3 a.m. got us. So there were things to do before you go in. So, I mean, obviously, so they, Fanto has set up some fun activities for kids there. Um, they had a, loop, a booth for um, kids to create their own little Funko Pops. They also had a booth where um, they had some Funko artists um, do some signings. They had some really large sculptures that were cool too, then statues all over the place. There was like a gigantic uh, Hulk statue, which I'll show you guys a picture of, and a huge Hulkbuster, like Iron Man statue in the street. Um, the outer like design of the building itself is really awesome there's like you know there's like statues of characters all along it and a gigantic funko sign which is very classic looking they had displays you know in the windows outside there's like a nightmare before christmas whole section five nights at freddy's um disney stuff like star yeah, they wars they had a little plaza area that's next to the shop where um, they play music and kids can dance and mm -hmm. whatnot um one of the things they did advertise was there's going to be food trucks, but realistically there was only two. Yeah. So I mean, I wish there was more. I thought it, I thought it would be a bigger like event where like, there's more food. I wish we could shout out that what was it called? It was called Midnight. Midnight, Midnight Market. Go to Midnight Market if you're ever in Everett. Yeah. This, this it, beautiful business mm -hmm. had yeah. the heart and soul to mm -hmm. stay open 24 hours that day, and that's where mm -hmm. everyone in line went to the bathroom, yeah. got yeah. food. And he was so nice. Yeah. He was a really nice, like the guy who owns the, sh the store was really nice. So if you're in the area, yeah. definitely yeah. patronize that shop, because they're great. I mean, <laughs> I, I know Funko did not 
enforce the camping rule, but what they did was also really stupid because um, they did not import the porta potties into the Until area. The legal time. Until 6 a.m. So people, I mean, I guess yeah. if you're gonna be there, you're gonna be camp, you're gonna suffer, but whatnot. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, yeah, they didn't have a Autumn and I had a fascinating trek down the streets of Everett we, at 4 a.m. We, we were chasing rumors of bathrooms that might be open. We went to a gas station <laughs> where the McDonald's, bathroom key yeah. was locked inside the bathroom. Someone got mugged <laughs> near a McDonald's. It was not a nice area. I mean, uh, supposedly the other thing though is this is not the first time that Funko has done this. Like I was hearing from a lot of people, something really similar happened at uh, Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, that I guess they established these guidelines for like lines and how it was supposed to be set up that were completely broken and not followed. And like the huge issue with this, like I'm sorry to keep coming back to it, but like you're you're reinforcing bad behavior and you're basically sending the message that like these guidelines you lay out for these events like are just light suggestions that like people can actually do whatever they want and they'll maybe still get rewarded for it. They certainly did. I think people cut in line while we so, were there. I mean the whole thing was a mess. So the other rule they had set up was you cannot, once you have your ticket you can leave and do whatever but you cannot line up until the previous group gets in. So basically so we were 5 p.m. I mean, we could not line up until the 4 p.m. has entered the store. But they did not enforce that either. And we said, oh, well, maybe we should check with them, you know, at 3.45 or 3.50 and see when we can line up. So we went up there to the line and we asked security, oh, okay, what, what's your recommendation when we can line up? Like, we're at 5 p.m. And they were like, oh, oh, you guys already lined up. So just just go ask around, so ask around and organized. find out where... 4 p.m. ends, and then you can line up there. Yeah. And so, okay, okay. So we go there, and half the line is already our, our, uh, our time our slot. Time slot. They already lined up. It's like, there's mm -hmm. no enforcement. There's no cue on, like, how you should do this and whatnot. It's just chaos. T horribly organized. Yes. Yeah. And then, yeah, and inside is great, and we'll show pictures and stuff the inside. And that's definitely the highlight of why we came and whatnot. It's a very pretty... Building. The it interior. was a really cool experience. Yeah, yeah the interior nice. was really awesome. And what's really cool about the interior is they sectioned it off by like different themes. So there was like an anime section where there was like a huge statue of Sailor Moon and like Goku on either end. And then there was like a frozen Disney section with the princesses and like Maleficent on the other side. And there yeah, was... there was a pathway where it was the castle on one side, it's all like the princess on the balcony. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side, it was the villains. Mm -hmm. And there was like a Diagonally esque area. Harry Potter had its own section. Yeah, and that was really detailed too. There was like a DC section with like Batman, the Batmobile. So <laughs> the complaints continue. <laughs> so how it was set up, you have an hour inside the, the shop. If you're in the first thousand people who purchase anything, um, you get a little um, pin set of Freddy. And, um, White Knight, Freddy. Yeah. yeah, and it was themed basically after the, uh, oh, Pine Size Heroes? Yes. Is it Pine Size Heroes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so a thousand, they have a thousand of them. And they, the tickets they hand out, they had 950 of them. That's how many they handed out. So essentially, if you got in, you got one. Correct. Mm -hmm. Logically speaking. <laughs> so, so there were still, there were still two groups behind us. Um, so when we first entered, um, there was another guy who was kind enough to be to spread the word that they were running out of pins. Yeah. They were there. He, he was like, "If you want to buy something, buy it now, so you can get the pin, and then you can continue shopping." If he hadn't done that, we, I don't think we would. Yeah, we wouldn't have gotten it. We like they ran out while we were in there. But so that brings up another issue: is issues they did not regulate who got what, and yeah. I think a lot of people exploited that. So yeah. it's just definitely there. They there are people who went there just to scalp these things. Oh, of course. We were able to get a good amount of exclusives, actually. Um, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, we didn't We, did, we never many. got any of the grand opening exclusives. We, yeah, we didn't get the day one exclusives, of which there were not very many. There were only two that were announced ahead of time, which were the, um, was Emerald Freddy, it was like a metallic green 
chrome Freddy, so gorgeous, and uh, Psycho Shriner, uh, the glow in the dark version. It was a variant of the Comic Con exclusive, um, which I was kind of, I didn't really care about missing that one. I was A on him. I was really bummed we missed Emerald Freddy, which was a 500 count, and um, yeah, like, like we said, the Robot Freddy, I guess, was not a limited count, but he sold out by the time we got in the store. And those were the two I feel like most of us wanted the most out of the exclusives. It was a huge bummer. We were not able to get either of them. Um, yeah, they also had a collection of, um, I, guess com I guess, comic book artists figurines. So like Kevin Smith and a couple other artists. Mm -hmm. um, and those were like five count for um, those Kevin were Smith. Gone. Those were all gone. Yeah, by the time we and got then yeah, the other ones. Yeah, like the whole event was really cool. We had a lot of fun. It just kind of put a down cast like on the whole day though. I mean, I remember to be really honest, my, as terrible as this sounds, my immediate reaction when we walked in and saw that like multiple things were already sold out was disappointment, to be honest. I was, I was disappointed. I was like, I don't know. I, there was a part of me too that was hoping there were more like unusual, rare chase stuff in there. And it was mostly stuff that's already readily available at like other stores. They had a lot of chases of like stuff that's out. And a lot yeah. of people purchased those up like beforehand. Like they had Chase like South Park ones that sold out really quickly. Yeah, supposedly people found Chases in there, but they were long gone by the time <laughs> we got there. Mm -hmm. um, um, some leftover Comic Con exclusives. Yeah, they had a bunch yeah. of Funko Shop exclusive that they had at Comic Con. So yeah, they had a cool stuff and you know Yogi Bear and stuff like that. Um, so that was another, I guess, exclusive area that I thought people. I mean, people didn't realize they had until we entered the store. So I mean, ultimately, the whole experience is very much a mixed bag. It was, I did get some really cool stuff. We all got some cool stuff. It was fun in many aspects. Um, I'd be open to visiting the shop again. Would I make a point to go to another event that they're hosting there? The way they handled it, no. Unless I get some kind of impression they start, I don't know. It, actually enforcing their rules and like organizing and managing these events better? Probably not. Lesser two evils, very much. Essentially, if you let people camp out first, then you create this unfair drive to be there before everyone else and camp out and create this chaos. But at the same time, if you open up where it's super close to like your hours, Everyone will mad rush there at 6 a.m. Autumn brought up a good point at yeah. one point where she was like, I wonder what that would have looked like though. Like, like if we, they all followed the rules and like 900 people showed up at the exact <laughs> same time, what would have even happened? Yeah, it's it's nice to have something that, you know, like I was there. We, we are fans, yeah. so we came specifically for the opening mm -hmm. event of this HQ awesome store. We wanted something to take home from that. The whole thing was pretty supportive of scalpers and alienating to fans, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't go again. But. Yeah, it was, you know, Funko, we love your products, you have adorable, beautifully designed products, but... Yeah, and if you're camping out that night, even if you're a huge fan, you just line up, like, you're so tired by the time you're in there. Yeah. We were zombies. Yeah, they had a nice idea, but they didn't follow through on it. And it's definitely, like, yeah, I, I mean, I recommend going there, like, Every, any other day to check out like the statue. The interior is very cool. Yeah, and they it's have a little nice. area yeah. for kids to um, to learn from the artists themselves and how to make their own Funko Pops. And stuff you can like that. pose for pictures with the sculptures. Yeah, so they make nice. for some really awesome pictures. It's yeah. nice on every other day, but the grand opening was a mess. I know there's kind of people who's gonna say you should have known or not, but don't you dare tell us we should have known that a company would break its own rules. <laughs> You're basically just saying we should expect. That, that this company does not mean what they say. Mm -hmm. And that is a message they're starting to send if they keep doing this. So Funko, don't establish these guidelines unless you're going to follow them. And it's and I've, you have the right idea in these guidelines, you know, and don't act like procedures and rules are light suggestions. Like you need to enforce them, especially when you have security staff and when you have the town police force staffed for an event of yours, you could have so easily, like I always, my line of thinking is like if you you're expecting a massive turnout like i said the same thing about d23 it's like you need to have enough staff to 
really just manage the crowds and um, and enforce rules on the crowds too. Like you can't be allowing chaos to happen. I know people and companies are kind of afraid and paranoid of chaos at events like this. So I almost feel like they err towards letting things happen and letting the attendees do what they want versus enforcing anything. But I mean, like we kind of mentioned earlier, it probably would have been chaos either way. But the way they structured the lines around the blocks, because it, it spans several blocks, this line, they did it in this really messy, like P or G shape. You know and why? The the attendees did what they wanted. The, the, attendees, the attendees decided attendees the decided. shape of the line. That was why they didn't. They enforced nothing. And that's it was, the yeah. point I was bringing up with that is that because it was such a messy shape, as soon as the line actually started moving to hand out the vouchers, people just cut. But you know, yeah, like we said, the interior was cool, but yeah, poorly I just, handled. Yeah, we didn't really come to just experience the store. We came to experience opening. Yes. Which we kind of got shorted on. But what hasn't changed is we still love their toys. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we will be showing you guys. So thank you for joining us for our experience. Long list of complaints about the Funko HQ grand opening. Um, be sure to let us know if you were there, if you heard about it, what your thoughts are on the whole thing. Let us know, um, yeah, if you're Funko fans and be sure to check out our next video, which is going to be um, a haul of all the stuff we did get. We did get some exclusives. We did get some very awesome stuff. Thank you for joining us and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.